Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. Um, so this is my first proper Google Hangout, so hopefully I'm doing it right. Um, according to these my instructions, I can open a chat box with you, so I am going to do that. Okay, so hopefully you guys should be able to chat to me if I've done it right. If not, I'm just going to keep talking. So um, I've got my my Twitter on here. So if you guys have questions while the live stream's going on, um, feel free to tweet me and I will try and answer. So there's this whole bunch of questions that came in early and I am going to just start going through them. Right. Um, do angels have last names? Um, if they feel like it. Um, that question was from Patricia. Um, Hold on, my Twitter stream is going, what's happening? Okay, apparently I am live and everyone can hear me. So here we go. Do angels have last names? Well, you know, really if they feel like it, they do because angels are angels and they can do whatever they want. They've been around for a lot longer than us. And the last name naming convention is a cultural thing. So maybe they, maybe they have it in their particular culture and maybe they don't because all angels are not the same in the guild hunter world. You know, they, they come from different parts of the world. Um, they have different um, way of, ways of thinking. So that's the answer to that question. Right, I'm gonna skip to, that was a Patricia's question. So I'm just gonna mark that. I'm gonna skip to a question from someone else. Um, let's see. So um, the question is from Itza. She said, um, this is a side changeling question. She says, in the final book of the Side Changing series, you started the transformation of the Arrow Scud. Are you going to continue it in the next books? Are we going to see a book for one of the Arrow children in the future? Yes, you will absolutely see, um, you know, what's what's happening with the Arrow Scud and how they're developing because, um, you know, if you read the series, you know, I like to, part of the joy of the series um, for me as a writer and, and hopefully for you as a reader is that you get to see people develop and grow. Um, it's not just, hey, they've got their hippie over after or hey, there's a resolution to this one issue um, and then you never see them again. So, you know, you're gonna keep seeing them and there's, there's such huge potential for growth within the Arrow Squad. So um, there are so many arrows I want to, you know, see more of and, not just the arrows that we already know really well, but there are also others within the group that um, maybe we just saw little bits of, um, you know, like um, Battle X, <laughs> um, as he was called. I, I find him fascinating and that particular relationship fascinating. So um, hopefully um, I'll have time to, to go into all of that. And since I'm, you know, I always say I'm going to be writing this series till I'm like 90. So. All right, I'm going to check my Twitter feed again. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, so just checking that I'm doing this right and I haven't like gone silent on you or anything, so it's all good. All right, um, so next question. And I'll just actually answer a little bit more on that question. I am actually writing Site Scheduling 15 right now, which um, it does actually have a title, but we haven't announced it yet, so um, watch the space. And um, there's a lot of arrows in there. Um, there's a lot of everyone in there, but I will talk a little bit more about that in a little bit later. So that was Itza's question. Thanks, Itza. Um, uh, this question is from Monica. She asked, is, is English your native language? Uh, do you speak any other languages? What other languages? How proficient are you in other languages? Um, she's asking because she's, um, wants to know how learning languages influences our thought process? That's a really interesting question. Um, so I am a little bit unusual in that I spoke two languages pretty much from birth. I was born in Fiji and um, Fiji is a multicultural place and there are three main languages, um, Fijian, English and Hindi. I uh, grew up speaking Hindi and English. Um, I don't remember learning either one as such, uh, though of course, of course, I went to school and did the spelling and all of that. But um, in terms of actually learning to speak either language, um, it was just something I did from a very young age. So um, I've always been able to think in two languages, which I guess is a little bit interesting. And 
the funny thing is, I there are certain words in, in one language that I really want to use in the other language because all languages have their, um, their subtleties. And there are things that one language can say um, that you just can't say as perfectly in another language or as, um, as in compact a form. So, um, and then um, as I grew up in high school and later I learned Japanese. And I lived in Japan for three years and that's, over that period I became actually fluent enough that I was able to think in Japanese as well. Um, my number one proud moment was being able to tell a telemarketer in Japanese um, who was speaking to me in Japanese and I was able to I was fully able to understand this person and I said I don't speak Japanese so I know that's terrible but I felt so proud that I could actually understand someone on the phone and um, sort of do that so yeah um, does it change your thought process I think it does I think it just uh, learning to speak other languages gives you also an insight into culture because language is um, you know, a great repository of culture as well. There are words in certain languages that, that don't exist in other languages um, for the simple reason that that language needs those words. Um, so yeah, cool question, a little bit different. Um, all right, I'm just gonna see if there's questions coming on Twitter. Okay. Good. All right, oh, there is one question over here, hold on. Um, so this came in on Instagram. Um, it's from Chocolate One. I like your username. Um, her favorite book is Heart of Obsidian in the Side Changing series. Um, she wants to know, would, um, so slight spoiler if you haven't read Heart of Obsidian. Um, I made this spoiler stick, but you know, I realized it like is in reverse. So spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Um, Actually, I didn't make that. I shouldn't tell her eyes. Ashwini made that, and she's like, it's a really cheap spoiler stick, and I said, it looks awesome. Um, so this is a spoiler for Heart of Obsidian, and she says, um, would Caleb and Sahara get another book in the Side Changing series? Um, look, I never say never because I've been surprised quite a few times, you know, with characters, but um, I can't see them having, like, a full-length book at this stage. Um, but you know the possibility is always open in the series because um, it is it is a long series and it's there is so much potential for where things will go. Um, but you know even if they don't come back um, into the series as like a full length book, they will definitely be in the series throughout because they are you know a very critical central couple in the series. Um, and so yeah, and they're definitely in this next book. Um, and you're gonna kind of start wondering, you know, how many people are in this book? Well, let me tell you after a, one more question, a few more questions. So, um, yeah, so not a full-length book at this stage. Um, you know, there's so many other people that are ready for their full-length books. And these two, even if a full-length book were to happen, it would happen quite a bit in the future because obviously we would want to see them at a different stage um, than we've already seen them at. And that's going to take time to develop, right? So I am going to move on to another question. Um, <laughs> so this question is from Candice. Um, it's for the Guild Hunter series. Um, she's like, am I imagining something between counselors Nikita and Anthony? If there is something going on there, are they going to have their story told? Um, so um, I kind of, oh, well, you know, there's actually a scene in the next book where um, I think it's Caleb. He says, wouldn't, you like, wouldn't we like to be, a, um, you know, oh, no, I think it was in the last book, wouldn't we like to be a fly on that wall? Well, so would I, honestly. Um, something is happening as to what's happening. I'm not sure. Um, you might get a little bit more of a glimpse of that in the next um, book. Um, personally, I, I find them fascinating. I just, I, I am like, what is happening there? I'm so fascinated. Can I just, and yet at the same time, I'm sort of terrified because it's like, well, I'm kind of scared of those two. Like, do I really want to sort of go behind the door and find out their secrets? Do they really want me knowing? You know, am I going to have errors after me? So um, I love them. I, I love them and I love whatever is happening with them. And honestly, I am finding out along with you guys because these two, and I think particularly Nikita, has been surprising me from day one. 
when when we started i i really you know i was in sasha's head and i saw her as sasha saw her and at that time you know she was very one-dimensional and then as the series has continued we see more and more and more and it's happened a little bit that way with anthony as well because when we first saw him um faith had this particular idea about her father and then it changed as as it as time went on and we began to see all these facets um, of both these characters. So um, I, I am just, I am fascinated by them and you are going to keep seeing them for sure. So just keep reading and we'll both, we'll all find out together what's happening over there. All right. Okay, next question. Um, this is from, hold on, Michaela. So she wants to know if I'm going to write about Ilium. I have to tell you, that's like the second question I get about the Guild Hunter series um, most regularly. The first question is if um, Elaine and Raphael are going to have a baby, which I will answer for all the people who um, you know, have asked me. Um, no. I, well, not in any, time, any kind of foreseeable future because you have to remember we're talking about immortal timelines and Elena has only really been... Um, an angel for a very short, very, very short period of time. I mean, Raphael describes um, human lives as fireflies, you know, burning out in the dark, and that's an entire lifetime. And so Elena has just been an angel for like a flicker of a moment. And she has to, she's not even fully become, she hasn't grown into her immortality. And um, I don't actually know if physically she could actually have a child at this point because, um, again, she hasn't fully grown into her immortality. So is this even possible? Um, the other thing, of course, is if it is possible, um, and for various reasons it may be possible because, you know, um, they're both growing, you know, showing new abilities and, and things like that, and particularly Raphael has the, the healing coming through. Um, I don't think she would choose to because even though she has, she has this amazing you know archangel as her as her lover um she's not going to be happy to be just relying on him to protect their child against all these threats and there will be a lot of threats because um they're in you know the cascade is in full effect and lijuan wants to take over the world and i don't know what Karis Omnon is up to and you know so it's a very dangerous time and elena is the kind of person who would want to protect her child um, herself as well as um, not simply relying on her on Raphael and um, I think you know knowing her past and her history um, you can see why it's so important to her um, and so yeah at this point no now onto this qu actual question that Michaela asked about Ilium I would love to write about Ilium I've always wanted to write about Ilium um, but at the same time I want to do it when he's ready I feel like um, I don't want to rush it I could write the story tomorrow and it wouldn't be the right story it would just be a story um and i've been really happy with all the books i've written for um for all of the seven um and i just want to feel that way about him as well so like i felt nasir's book was very nasir you know i mean he just, he's shown in that book, that entire book um, carried his stamp. And I felt the same way about Storm and about Blade with um, Jason and Dimitri. So um, I want to feel that way about Ilium too. So, you know, just keep reading and things are happening with Ilium. Um, and yeah, we're going to keep finding out um, what's going on with his development. And eventually I think, you know, he will get a story. But um it won't be just like, it won't be the next book. So, sorry about that. But hopefully you'll have fun along the journey. So, all right. Um, this question is from Brittany Weeks. She says, when writing your books, do you visit a place before pouring into your world? Uh, for example, Sierra Nevada, Chinatown, New York, etc. cetera. Um, this is a really interesting question because um, I didn't used to. Um, so for my first few books, so for those of you who don't know, I started out writing um, straight, can, can, short contemporary romances. And in, at that time, I did a lot of research, but I wasn't um, sort of traveling to places to, um, you know, explore the world. And I think it's, it's very, very possible to write really good books without actually traveling to the place, because especially these days with the amount of access we have on the internet, um, 
not just not just um, to like things like Google Maps and um, webcams and all of that, but like to people who will answer your questions. Um, you know, every so often I have a question uh, and I'll just put it on Twitter or Facebook and someone say, hey, you know, I can answer that question for you. So it is very, very um, doable in this world. But um, I do prefer, if I can, um, to have been to the place. Um, and the reason it's, it's kind of um, in the genesis of the side changing series because what happened was I before I ran off to Japan to write uh, because basically that's what I did. Um, I decided to do some traveling because I had a little bit of time before my contract in Japan started, um, and I had um, finished my contract, the work I was doing in New Zealand. So I decided to travel through the states, and um, and one of the places I went was California, and I traveled. Um, through that and I traveled to like San Francisco and um, you know through Chinatown and all of those places and at that time I wasn't thinking oh hey this is going to be a great setting I was just soaking in everything about these places and and also I went ended up in New York right so at the end of my trip and um, if you guys ever, if you guys want to know about my crazy trip to New York um, look up the the speech I gave at the RW a 2015 conference um yeah i, I just i just four-day train trip people there 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 were breakdowns and i i'll just leave it up there so um yeah go read that um or watch it and um so i i you know i did my trip and then i went to japan and it was while i was in japan that i got the idea for the size changing series and I got that idea and then I was like, oh, I know where this is going to be set. The setting came with the idea because I think I had all those landscapes in my head and I knew, oh, perfect. Of course, it'll be in San Francisco. Of course, you know, of course, um, California is, is going to have these mountains and these lakes and these cities and uh, it's even got desert. So it's, it was this massive landscape and it was exactly what I needed. Um, and Chinatown, you know, it was just like, oh, fantastic. How, what a brilliant um, setting. And um, it was something unique. And had, I hadn't seen it before, but that wasn't why I chose it. I chose it because it just clicked when I started writing the book. And again, having been to New York, when I started, um, when I got the idea for the Guild Hunter series, it was, it just came. It just it came together like this, like a pair. Because again, it was like, I had been there, I had felt the energy of the city. And when I had the idea for the Guild Hunter series, I thought, of course, this is where, where Elaine is going to live. Where else would she live? New York is her city. Um, and so it went from there. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, if, I, if you can, as a writer, to travel somewhere, I think it does help because you can get all the tiny details and you can get, like, the feel of a place, which I think is more difficult to get um, when you haven't been somewhere. But having said that, um, I have written about places I haven't been to, um, but it does require, require just a lot of legwork and making sure you get your research right. Okay. Ooh, okay, I better check my Twitter, which I have been ignoring. Okay. Um, okay, Siang wants to know if between Iliam and Arden, who do you think will be ready for their own book first? Ah, tricky question. You know what? I don't, I don't. I don't know. These people, they keep surprising me. I'm like, yeah. You know, when I started writing, I thought the Guild Hunter series was a one-off. If you've heard me speak, you have told, I had this grand plan to write like one series, which was the side changing series. And then I was going to write um, single title books in between. So there would just be one book and Angel's Blood was supposed to be one book. Yeah. We'll see. We see how that worked out. So that, that's when I realized I am not a, basically a one book single title type of a writer. I really like series because I like um, developing the world and the characters from book to book. Um, but yeah, part of that is the, the, the characters have the constant capacity to surprise me and, and that's what I actually love about it. I, I, I tried um, plotting all my books out like, like in, with the nitty gritty um, and it was just, a, just didn't work for me. So I like the journey, the surprise. Um, Though I always know where we're where we're going, um, 
which might sound like a paradox, but I can have the overall picture without knowing how we'll get there. So I have the end destination in mind, um, and that seems to help everything hang together. And um, I think that's actually really important as a writer to have the, the end point in mind um, whenever you start a series. Otherwise, um, you get series where you ask a really um, interesting question, but then there is no answer because um, the author or the creator didn't think of that answer before they asked the question or after they asked the question, but before they put it out into the world. All right, I am just going to double check that I didn't miss anything. Okay. Yay, thanks for the nice comments, everybody. Okay, nice to know that I'm not talking to myself. All right, I am going to do some more questions from this list. Um, um, okay. Okay, so um, there's a couple of people who've asked about um, about the next books in the series. So Roz has asked um, whose story will be next in each series and when can we expect it to be published? Um, and she's also offered to type and proofread it if it would speed up the process. <laughs> Thanks for that, actually. And the funny thing is I might actually need some new beta readers for, um, or additional beta readers for the next size changing book because it's going to have so many continuity factors. Um, I am, I am, I'm trying to think of a, a polite word to say it. I'm very intense about continuity. I really, you know, I, I really, really um, bothers me if there's a mistake in the continuity. So I spend actually weeks going over continuity to make sure it's um, correct. And Ashwini, um, my assistant, um, she also has read the books like a gazillion times and she will constantly check continuity factors for me because even though I am, um, I know it. I know it in my head. A lot of it, it, it's in my head, but I still will double check because for various reasons. Once, you know, I could, I'm not perfect, you know, I could maybe make an error um, or um, not remember like a tiny fact from 10 books ago. Um, but I also check because of my writing process, which is I write a lot and then I actually edit books down usually. Um, so there are deleted scenes and things like that. But that information is still in my head. So I always have to double check that you guys have the information that I think you have. Um, but um, because um, Side Changing 15 has so many continuity factors, I am like, I think I'm going to need some really, really like fans who really know the books front and back to double and tri or triple check because uh, I would have read it. Um, and gone over the continuity. Ashwini would have gone over the continuity. Um, so we'll need like, I think like, 10 other people to go over the continuity. So um, I don't know, if anybody wants to volunteer, go ahead, but um, it's, it's, you'll probably hate me by the end of it because I'll be like giving you the books in pieces and be like, oh, can you know, is this right? Like, this is what I think happened, you know, 10 books ago. Um, but um, so yeah, it's, it, it'll be intense. But um, so that might be happening. Uh, watch this space. I just have to write a bit more um, and um, before I start sort of um, giving it to beta readers. Um, so going back to Rosal's question, question, which is um, next book in each series and when can you expect it to be published? So the Guild Hunter series and the Side Changeling series are pretty much on a set schedule, roughly, as long as um, something doesn't change in my life or uh, there's no kind of, uh, I guess, something disaster to um, stop it. So the side changing book will come out sort of June or July next year um, and I'm working on it right now and the Guild Hunter book usually comes out in the September October period so around that time next year. I haven't actually uh, started writing it um, that yet because I I do work on more than one project at a time but I don't like to work on um, the side changing and the Guild Hunter books at the same time because um, they're, they're both you know, paranormal series with intense continuity and um, my second project, whatever I'm working on at the same time as um, one of those books is, I like it to be something totally different. Um, just, it gives me a bit more clarity. Um, and it also means there's no, um, there's there's no areas of continuity or things like that. So um, I will start working on the next Guild Hunter book when I finish this book. Um, and though I have an idea of, you know, a very strong idea of where, where what that book's going to be like and where it's going to go, I, I 
don't want to announce it just yet because I think for me, part of the process of writing is letting the ideas sit in my brain uh, for several months and um, really um, simmer and grow. And um, so, yeah, I'm, it's in that process right now. So even though I'm not writing it, um, a lot of it is happening in my mind. So I wake up, you know, in the morning. Oh, I know exactly where that scene's going to go. And then I go and make my notes. But um, I usually like to get at least into, um, you know, a good way into the book before I tell people. Because every so often I think I know everything and then the character slap me upside the head and all falls apart so i don't want you guys to be disappointed which is why i always um announce a little bit um probably closer to the date um than some other authors do um but that's just because of my writing process and side changing 15. so this is the book i'm working on now and this is going to be an interesting book because it does it's not going to have one hero or heroine so it is an ensemble cast book um so in the past few books in the series we've very clearly come to the end of a series arc Right, and the next one has begun. But before we dive fully into the next arc, I have I really wanted to go back and um, I guess see everyone again and find out um, what's happening and tie up a few loose ends that we haven't been able to. Um, you know, hey, it's not possible in the full length books with the with the plot line. So um, it is going to be an unusual book. Um, and I hope you all come along with me. It's, it is very much, I'm, I'm saying it's a family book. It is a book about family, um, about connections, um, about whether those bonds are of blood or of loyalty or of love. Um, you know, it's, it's about all those kind of things. And so there's not as much politics um, and I suppose not as much action in this book. Um, but there's, a, there's still a lot of cool stuff happening. And, you know, I was, I've been surprised again by a few things that have come up and I was like, Ooh. And, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, pup cups, but <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's going to be a fun book. I'm having a really fun time um, catching up with everyone. And it's not just the the characters who've had like, um, I should probably stop moving my hands because um, it'll make the video crazy. But um, it's not just going to be the characters who have had full length books, but um, I also would like to catch up with the novella characters as well. So. Yeah, we'll be doing that. It'll be heaps of books. Uh, heap, I mean, heaps of books. <laughs> heaps of people in there. And um, but you know, it is very much a book for fans. So um, I know you guys know these characters. They're they're family. And um, so this is the book where we get to check in with the um, with the entire family before we dive off into the next stack of the series. And but um, there's also going to be an extra next year because I um, I've been working on this secret anthology. For a while which is not secret because i put it on my blog um and it was it's it's all new side changing stories so um now i'm gonna have brain freeze while i'm trying to tell you what they are um no so the first one is a novella that is set in the deep sea station alaris um and it um features stefan the mysterious tk who has been mentioned um multiple times um in the series and um that we don't really know much about so we get to see stefan and i love i love his story i think it's, it's so romantic and um so beautiful and i just i just adored writing it and i can't wait for you guys to read it um and the next one is um uh, a little bit unusual it's a i call it a novelette because it's not as long as a novella but it's longer than a short story and it's about Dorian and um, not just who is now, it's about his growing up years. And then we basically follow him through his life, through, um, through this novelette. And I, I, I think it's one of my favorite things I've written. It is um, because we get to really explore his character. And um, I had a reader come back and said, you made me cry. And I was like, yes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I really, really had fun writing it. And there's a scene in there um, between Dorian and Lucas that I was, just, I was crying. So <laughs> I really, I really love it. And um, and then the other one is a really unusual story for me, which is a um, story between a um, dominant female and a submissive male, which I have never done um, in this series. And it was interesting writing from that point of view. And I hope I've done it justice because I, I love this hero, I love this heroine, and I'm like, man, I hope I'm telling you your story right, because it has all these 
different nuances to the stories um, in the other books. Um, so yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun too. And oh, and um, just to mix it up, it's it's it all, that one is also a Dark River Snow Dancer story. And the last but not least is actually um, two Latins that we've been waiting for. So Garnet and Kenji, and this is a mystery. So they get to solve a mystery together, and it's really fun. And we also get to find out why Garnet might possibly have given Kenji a black eye. And, um, the mating ceremony for Hawk and Sienna. So lots of good stuff coming up next year. And that is, so that is all brand new stuff. Nobody's ever read it. It's, you know, except me and my editor and my agent and um, a few better readers. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy it too. I will just check this feed in case there are more questions on here that I'm missing. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Katrin. Who is going to be in Elena's guard besides Sam, Isaac, Ashwini, and Janvier? Um, you know, and, uh, actually Vivek is in there. Um, and I think that's been mentioned in the books, I'm pretty sure. If it hasn't, I'll totally spoiled you. Um, but, um, you know, it's things like guards, they're, they're natural. Um, they grow as, as people come into the lives of other people. So, for example, if someone comes into Elena's life or someone that's already in her life um, becomes closer to her um, to the point where she thinks, hey, yeah, I would like this person, um, you know, to be beside me for, for the long term kind of thing, um, it'll happen. So that's the way um, the seven came together. They didn't come together all in one whole lot. And Raphael would, at the start, he wouldn't have known he was going to end up with seven. Um, and so they, their name grew after they had all come together. So yeah, it's going to be just, it's a work in progress and we're going to see. So, all right. So I'm going back to my questions here. All right. I feel very technological. I've got my phone, my laptop, my iPad is not working. It's giving me like error messages. I would have that here as well. Um, okay. Right. Oh, there's a question from Karen Alexandra. Did you get to choose the models of your rock series covers? Um, I did. Um, so that was really fun. I, the photographer um, would send me photos and say, what do you think of this guy? And then she'd send me shirtless photos and go, what do you think of this guy? And I was like, well, wow, six pack. I'm on board. No. Um, it's actually um, the rock redemption cover was the hardest to um, cast because we needed a blonde model because obviously Noah is blonde and if you see the behind the scenes video that we did for the rock redemption shoot and if you haven't seen that it's um it's on my um it's on youtube if you look up rock redemption um behind the scenes or um if you just look up my name nalini singh it should come up um if you've seen it you'll see the the model andy is actually not blonde he's a brunette um and then but he was the best model in terms of the face and, and you know everything else and so um we decided to go with him and because most of the covers uh, i realized were we didn't actually see the hair color of the 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 character on the cover so that was okay that um and actually, um, previously I had asked my editors, you know, when I have blonde heroes, why can't you put a blonde hero on the cover? Because some of the heroes have been like, have dark hair. And I'm like, no, no, he's got blonde hair. And they said, it's, it's really hard to get blonde models. And I didn't believe them. And now I do. So, um, yeah, so it's been interesting. It's been interesting being involved in, um, in the, the whole process. And um, it was really fun. And I am so glad I got to... You know, attend a photo shoot. Um, that's the first time I ever got to attend one, and yeah, it was pretty brilliant. I don't think anything can live up to that now, so I just will never go to another photo shoot, even if I can. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let me see. I have questions on the next page too, so I should make sure I turn over the page. Okay. All right. Um, so Maggie Archer has asked, how do I feel about fan art and fan fiction about my characters? Um, have you ever read or seen something to have it inspire me for an actual book? So there's two different questions. So the first one about fan art and fan fiction. I mean, I think it's fabulous that my books inspire people to create. I think it's, it's you know, it's, it's really inc an incredible thing. And um, I love, I love it when people show me their fan art. I think it's, 
fantastic and I like to share it um, like on Facebook or on my website, blog, or, um, whatever. Um, it's a little different with fan fiction. I, I don't read it. Um, I don't mind if you guys write it um, for yourself um, as long as you don't try and sell it. You know, I'm cool with it. Um, I think, you know, go for it, have fun. Um, but I don't read it for the simple reason that I don't want um, I don't want it ever to be thought that I was influenced by fan fiction and um, the because the thing is um, if a fan fiction is based on something I've written um, there are obviously clues and um, threads I've laid down which are going to come up in future stories and um, fan fiction writers are going to pick up on that too and so um, this way if I don't read any fan fiction I can just go with my vision um, without without having any worry that someone's going to turn around and say hey I came up with that first so um, because it is my world and I really want to play in it um, you know as I want um, but yeah I mean you guys go for it and I hope um, it helps you um, develop your own writing muscles and that you eventually create worlds of your own um, I never wrote fan fiction myself but um, I'm a huge huge fan of Anne McCaffrey um, and um, Mercedes Lackey as well and I used to imagine um, you know stories set in their worlds um, just in my head and I think fan fiction is very much um, that kind of thing and and I really think doing that kind of imagination helped me grow as a writer because it it taught me how to build worlds um, so yeah go for it but um, don't send it to me. <laughs> fan art is welcome though. All right. So um, here we go. Okay. So the second part of part of Maggie's question was: Have you ever read or seen something and have it inspire me for an actual book? Sure, all the time. Um, usually, it's 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 not so much reading. It's it tends to be things I've seen um, or heard, even um, like a piece of overheard conversation, for example. Um, I remember my second book, my my very, very second book. So this was um, called, came out in, I think, like 2004. Um, and it was called Awaken to Pleasure. And um, I was working in, in the city at the time. And I was going home on a kind of misty, rainy day. And I saw this woman standing um, at a bus stop under a light, uh, like a street light. And there was like misty rain all around her, so I could, um, but the light sort of lit her up. And I just thought, who is this woman? Um, why is she standing there? And, you know, at that time that I saw her, it was only like, I don't know, 6, 6.30, something like that. So it was a perfectly reasonable time to be standing, waiting for a bus home from the city. But my mind took that and, I, and sort of set it up really late at night. And what is she doing at the bus stop? And suddenly she had no purse. And... Well, it turned out she just had the most horrible date experience and he'd driven off with her purse and sort of left her with no money on the street. And um, and so, of course, the hero drove by um, and saw her. So that's, you know, that's that's an, that's a moment that I actually remember very vividly and that, that inspired the story. Um, and quite often I don't actually remember the specific moments that inspired something. I, I might remember something that... Or something got me thinking, but then the story goes in such a different direction that I, that initial spark might have been completely unrelated. Um, yeah. So, okay. I will just check questions on here before I go on to. Okay. So, right. Next question. Um, it's cool. Some of these questions in other languages that have been translated, which I think is awesome. Um, so v Vili wants to know when will Venom return to New York and do you think he's ready for his book? Um, I think Venom might be back in the next book, but I'm not quite sure. I'm just going to see. Um, it's all Galen. Galen's going to decide if Venom's ready to return. Um, he is actually the youngest of the seven and in immortal terms, you know, he is quite young, like not super young. Um, because he has such responsibilities and he's very strong uh, and so he's grown a lot um but um yeah I, I, that's it's really in the air at the moment i'm going to see um this you know the next time i see him i'm going to see where he's at um and he'll tell me if he's ready or he's not okay right um okay so there's a question from lucy child 
Um, what is Ava and Spencer's little girl called? Um, it's not actually a secret or anything. I just realized it's not in the books, but um, it's actually going to be in the next book. So I think I might just leave it for you guys to discover in there because I think it's it's nice to have those little things in the books um, that you look forward to finding out. So it will be answered in the next book. Okay. Um, so Maria wants to know if Alice will get a book. Um, she says, I'm sure a lot of people want to know her story and she needs someone just for her. Actually, I do get a lot of questions about Alice, but Alice is in a truly unusual place. She, like, some people say she's really old, but of course she's not because she was, you know, cryonically suspended. But in her mind, she lost everyone yesterday because she woke up and the day before she had her family, she had the man that she loved and um, even though she couldn't be with him and and now it's all gone. She woke up and it was all gone. So she's in this, she has a lot of grief inside her and she's not ready to move on at all. It hasn't, there's been no really passage of time. So yeah, she's, um, she's going, you're going to see her again. And at this stage, I can't see her being ready anytime soon. Um, I kind of in a, have an inkling of where she might end up. But, um, you know, I'm going to let Alice guide me and um, see where she takes me. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, oh, someone mentioned my newsletter, which I will tell you about since it's here. Um, I do like free shorts and um, slice of life things for my newsletter for free. So um, if you aren't already a member, you should be because you will get cool stuff. Um, and I write these shorts. I used to write these shorts um, for myself late at night, and I call them fan fiction for myself <laughs> of my own stories. So, um, and then someone said, "Hey, you should actually start sharing them." So that's what I do. I um, so there are just fun things that are uh, basically glimpses through the window of the characters' lives, and you can sign up for that on my website, nalinisingh.com. All right. Um, I have lots more questions, but I'm going to. I'm trying to sort of spread them out between the various series. Um, so there's a question here. I saw it, but now it's gone. Um, okay. So this question is from Alina, and it's about the Rockka series. It says, after Abe's book, will you write about the Gabriel's family or start another series? Um, so first, I want to finish Abe's book. So I am quite deeply into it. So that's my second project that I'm working on alongside the Sai Changeling book. So as I said, I like to work on two totally different things. Um, and once I finish it, I will decide. Um, I would really like to write about Abe's brothers, um, Gabriel's brothers. And I have actually jotted down ideas for their stories. Um, but at the same time, I've got something else um, burning away in my brain. And so um, actually today I spent a few hours on that other project, the burning away in my brain project. And um, and I really, really would like to finish that as well. So it could be that I take a break between the contemporaries and do this other thing and then um, come back. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I am enjoying the contemporaries doing something a little bit different. And so I could just keep going. So we'll, it, it's all up in the air at the moment um, because originally I had only um, thought to do these five um, for the Rock Kiss series and then Gabriel's brothers came out of nowhere and they were awesome and I was like, oh my God, I, I can't write about you, but I couldn't make them any less awesome. I was like, oh no, no, write them out, write them out, make him have no brothers, but I just, yeah, I couldn't do it because I just fell in love with them. So um, They'll definitely get their stories, I think. It just depends whether I do it um, next year or if there's a short break in between and I um, do it the year after. Okay. Okay, and I've answered this question. Um, okay, let's see. All right. Um, there's a question from Catherine Solidon. Um, how old is Remy? Lucas became alpha at... Um, 19 hope at 15. Um, Remy is, I think, I, okay, so I'm answering this off the top of my head and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's in his 20s. So as he said, he is sort of, um, his late 20s, I think, um, mid to late. So he said he's like, when he says, when he talks about being like a, um, a late developing alpha, it's not so much that he's late at picking up the reins of an alpha because both Lucas and Hawk were in an unusual situation where they had to pick up the reins very early. Um, 
had everything gone according to plan, they probably would have been in their 20s when the reins were handed over. Remy, um, when he talks about being sort of late, um, is late in that he didn't know that he was ready to lead. Um, he didn't, you know, the alphaness inside him existed, but it didn't truly become awake until later in his life. And so he has had to learn on the fly as opposed to Lucas and Hawk, who, even though they took over too early and they really, you know, they didn't have all the training they should have, from a very young age, they knew they were going to be alphas. So they were being taught um, gently from the start. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right. Oh, there's a question from Diana. Um, will I be telling Zara's story in a future book? <laughs> and Zara, for those of you who have forgotten, is the designer from Slave to Sensation. And she appeared and she was like, I loved her. I loved her. And I always thought I would write her book or a novella. Um, and it's just never been right. And um, But she is going to be, you know, have a guest appearance in the next book. And, you know, I'm hoping that it's going to be right for her very soon. So, okay. Just going to make sure that I've answered all your questions. Um, okay, so some of them are double up, so I'm, I'm kind of scanning them. And some I'm not answering because they're massively spoilery. <laughs> okay, so this is, I have to use my, my spoiler stick again. Spoiler, spoiler. Um, so this is for um, Caleb and Sahara. Um, the question was, are they going to have children one day? Well, you know, I, I never, as I said, I never say never, so I don't know what's going to happen with these two, what they'll decide. But at this point in time, um, I think it's pretty clear they're not in a place um, where they could have children. Um, you know, they both need to become in a far better place and Caleb needs to trust himself um, a lot more than he does now. And he does have a very genuine you know, fear or not fear or concern of, um, you know, what's in his genes. So, yeah, we're going to we're going to um, just let those two grow and um, settle into into their life. And yeah, and hopefully, um, you know, they'll have a happy life with their with their. And well, they will, you know, because they love each other, but um, and they are very together and content um, as a couple. So um, if there are children it will be it will be a joyous extra but it's not something that i think they are um currently thinking about at all so all right so i think um we're coming to the end of the hangout but i will just check this because make sure i'm not doing it wrong okay um somewhere uh, um Catherine asked if we're going to see Vivek in the next Skill Hunter book. I'm not sure about that. Um, as I said, I haven't um, started writing it yet. So um, I have to work out the timelines and where he's at and whether he's ready to be seen because, you know, Vivek is um, very proud and he does not want to be seen at a until he's at a place where he feels like he's in control. And, and um, in the previous book, he, he wasn't at a place where he wanted his friends to see him um, because, you know, even though he is... He was paralyzed. He was still very much in control of his environment and um, everything he did, and he was relied on. Um, and I don't think he is not the kind of man who would be happy um, to be seen as helpless at all. So it all depends on where he is physically um, after the transformation. Okay, so I am going to go through this question list one last time to make sure I haven't missed anything that I can answer. Um, Okay. Oh, Pat Smith asks, do you think the series will ever be sold as a box set? Um, and will I be traveling to the UK anytime soon? Um, I think um, it's a long series. I don't know what series you were talking about, um, Kat. Um, if it's the Star Changing series, it is a very long series, so it would be a really giant box set. <laughs> um, the Guild Hunter series, um, you know, I think box sets probably are more um, likely once a series is complete because it's easier to sort of um, 
you know, say, okay, this is the entire series. Here you go. It's a special box set. Um, and at this point, the Sci Shining series is ongoing and so is the Guild Hunter series. Um, though I think the Guild Hunter series would be shorter. And, and so at that point, possibly a box set. Um, um, so, yeah, I guess that's an open question. As to whether I'll be travelling to the UK anytime soon, I, I don't know, but I am coming to Berlin next year. And... Um, so I might be able to do a, a London stopover. So, um, you know, uh, hopefully that will happen. But um, if it doesn't happen, come see me in Berlin. It'll be um, cheaper than coming all the way to New Zealand. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that's done. Um, okay, so um, I'm just going to answer a question from Jessie. She asked me, how was the Psy Changing series a born? So um, I've always been interested in like um, psychic abilities and things like that and whether we use our brain to its full potential, all of that. And one day I remember sitting there thinking, wouldn't it be awesome if we had like psychic abilities, like telepathy, telekinesis, you know, like the real deal. Um, and I thought that would be really awesome. And then I kept thinking and I thought, yeah, but what if they drove us insane? What if that was the cost of, of being that mentally gifted? And it just, I just ran from there and I, the changing, I don't know where they came from. They just were like in the book going, yep, we're going to be in this book now. So I just ran with it and um, it was fantastic. I just, it, I had this insane writing schedule. I just was so in love with the world and the characters that I just wrote manically, to be honest. And it's, it's kind of a legend that I lived on peanut butter toast for dinner for like three weeks running. And I still love peanut butter toast, by the way. So it did not change anything for me at all in my love of peanut butter toast. It, if only it just made it deeper because I got to create this wonderful book fueled by um, peanut butter toast. So, um, yeah, it was it was that single what if question uh, followed by another what if question. And um, that's how the series began. So and then I just ran with it and did what the characters wanted me to do. All right. Um, OK. Um, so I am going to do one last check of Twitter. So if you have any any questions, let me know. There's a very spoilery question coming. I can't answer that for you, Sang. But um, I think read the book and um, you'll get an insight into it. Um, and there oh, will be a little bit of an answer in the next book because you are going to find out how um, the ghost and Judd and Father Xavier um, all kind of got together a little bit more so um yeah so thank you very much for listening to this broadcast and i hope i i did okay for my first ever google hangout and um yeah oh and if you i think someone asked me about the maps behind me there um so i use maps when i'm working and it just helps me set the scene and i have these 3d maps so yes they're like google maps but you know in printed form and i and i actually really like the printed form um so the one i have right now is um manhattan and california now they're two behind me at the moment and i i buy these whenever i find them for whichever city because i don't know when i'm going to need them and um they're actually falling apart because i use them so much so i was just putting i was just thinking i need to start taping them together so that i can still have them in 10 years time because i really really love them so um yeah thanks guys for watching and hope you guys have a good night